Hello everyone and welcome to our first webinar for today. I am Mohammed Al Zajali, petroleum engineering student at University of Oklahoma, and I will be your moderator for this amazing webinar. Our <laughs> webinar today is about water flooding principles and practice, which will be presented by Engineer Karim Magdi. Engineer Karim is a reservoir engineer at Gulf of Suez of Petroleum Company, GUPCO. Engineer Karim has completed his bachelor of engineering at the age of 20, 23 years from Suez University, sparked his career as field engineer for almost two years, then transferred to be the office headquarters to join the technical, technical contracts team for challenging one year. Finally, he persuaded his dream and switched into reservoir engineering two years ago. Since graduation, he has participated in many well-known worldwide com competition by AAG, uh, PG and SPE and got honored by His Excellency, the Petroleum Minister, Engineer Sharif Ismail. Also, he's represented his company in different conferences like EGYPS 2019 and recently participated in WHOC Oman 2019 with technical presentation on water conning management. Moreover, being thirsty and passionate to develop himself, he joined many exotic Uh, activities and different roles from an uh, active member to chairperson and currently is a reservoir team leader in PDP Petroleum Development Program. It's our pleasure to have you today, Engineer Karim, and the mic is definitely yours. Uh, okay, thank you, Mohammed, for your nice words. Uh, hello all from Egypt. Uh, first of all, I want to say thanks a trillion for Dr. Ahmed Garhi for such a invitation. Uh, moreover, I want to say thank you for all parties involved in this amazing program. Thank you, SP Egypt. Thank you, Marida College. And thank you, Pai Petro, for such this uh, interesting and amazing Arab Oil and Gas Academy uh, in memory of Dr. Shama Sadin, rest in peace. So uh, I'm Karim Magdi, uh, a reservoir engineer, and today Uh, I'll talk about water injection, how to apply it. So uh, I think my presentation is clear now. Okay. So uh, the water flooding or the water injection, the principles behind, the practice behind, and how to apply it from a practical point of view. Uh, first of all, as Mohammed mentioned, thank you again, Mohammed. I'm Kareem Magdi, I'm a reservoir engineer in GAPCO. And by the way, uh, GAPCO is one of the leading oil and gas company uh, in water flooding projects. Uh, we have been implementing water injection for more than uh, 40 years, and we are injecting right now more than uh, 300,000 barrel uh, water per day. So we are a leading uh, company uh, uh, all over the Middle East in water injection and water flooding. Uh, actually, uh, I have participated in different roles from uh, field engineer to uh, technical co contract engineer, then uh, finally uh, a reservoir engineer for almost uh, the last three years. And uh, also I participated in different conferences like Egypt uh, and the World Heavy Oil Congress in Oman uh, with a presentation about also the water cooling uh, related problems. And I have been uh, involved in so many different activities. So not to waste your time, uh, I'm gonna start. So for any water injection uh, project, we have three uh, disciplines or three scales. You, you need to look at the reservoir scale, the well scale, and the surface facility scale. For reservoir management, we have so many concepts. Uh, like as you can see in the presentation, we may talk about the displacement efficiency, the conformance review, uh, the pressure management, and uh, uh, the second uh, scale or the second uh, main item, which, which is the well performance itself. You need to check uh, the sand management, the water shutoff, and uh, also the scale management. And uh, the final part, or the, the most uh, third important part in any water injection or water flooding project, is the surface facilities. In terms of uh, your line design, what are the, what is the specs of your line uh, in terms of uh, size, capacity, uh, length, material, and also what about the separation uh, process, the separation design, how you Uh, you, uh, how you're gonna uh, deal with your produced water, and uh, what about your pumps and tanks, the, the efficiency of your pumps, the number of your pumps, and uh, uh, how, the, how does these pumps work together in barrel or series. So, so many concepts relating to uh, the water injection process. But here in this uh, uh, one hour webinar, I will uh, try to focus on the reservoir management as, as being a reservoir engineer, and I will try to give you a practical point of view Uh, what we are uh, actually doing in our 
uh, GAPCO or our companies related to the water injection. So uh, I'll go through just a brief introduction about the water injection, and I will uh, go through the main four questions, which I believe uh, these are the, uh, uh, the main questions in any water injection project around the world. Okay, so let's start. So simply, uh, what is the water injection? What is the importance? Uh, as you can see on the left side of the slide, uh, this is a very important chart, which is the recovery mechanism. And as you can see, uh, for, oil, for any oil uh, reservoir or, or any oil field, uh, you're gonna produce oil and at certain time, uh, you, you will see like a decline in your uh, oil. So uh, we have three categories, which is the primary, secondary, and tertiary recovery. And as I think all of you know, what is the primary recovery means, which is the natural uh, reservoir energy and the pressure, and it's by time it will decline. So uh, as a result, you will see that your oil is, is also declining. Uh, but so we need to think how to increase again our oil. And here is uh, the term of the second uh, recovery. Every, as you can see, this is the second peak, which is a, 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 a method or, uh, or something we do to increase our oil uh, again. So one of these methods is our, or one of the most important and common ways of the secondary recovery to increase your oil is the water injection. And as you can see simply in the right uh, side of the, of the slide, that's a very simple sketch. We have some injector wells and some producer wells. So in these in injector wells, you're gonna inject some water and this water will increase the pressure and sweep oil towards the producer so that uh, you will see uh, as a peak and you will increase your oil recovery, okay? So this is simply uh, the concept or uh, 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 the big picture of the water injection project, just to injecting compatible water under pressure into your reservoir to increase your oil recovery. That's it, okay? Okay, so uh, there are so uh, many important concepts. However, I will not talk about this concept in this presentation uh, because I believe that all of you should go and read this concept because it's very important uh, if you're gonna study or you're gonna work in a water project, you have to know what is the term of injection patterns, what are the different forms of these injection patterns, what's what we call what reservoir homogeneity or reservoir heterogeneity, and what is the effect of this reservoir heterogeneity in your water injection project, uh, what is the mobility ratio, and what is the fractional flow curves, how to calculate or how to get this fractional flow, cu flow curves, and how to use these curves in your water injection project, also, what is what, what we mean by vertical sweep efficiency and what is the aerial sweep efficiency, what is the displacement efficiency and what its factors and how can I control all of these factors to have uh, an optimum water injection project. So uh, you can uh, read all of these concepts in any of the reference and I recommend Tar Ahmed, um, <coughs> sorry, as a simple uh, uh, reference for uh, beginners. It will be uh, very helpful for you to, to go through all of these concepts. So, uh, right now, I will not talk about all of these concepts as I mentioned. However, I will go to the practical part of any water injection uh, project. So, uh, as you can see in this slide, uh, you have a manager, uh, a reservoir engineer, and he gonna ask you some questions uh, regarding the water injection project. Uh, some of these questions, or uh, I think, I, or I believe, this, these are the four main questions, which is, what is the optimum time to start your water injection? The second question is how much water do you need to inject into your reservoir? And the third question is how to calculate the value of the water injection? And finally, how to monitor and evaluate the effectiveness of your water injection? So I think you're all ready. Let's start with our first question. So the first question is when to start your water injection? What is the optimum time to start your water injection? So as you can see, this graph is simply, uh, we are plotting the reservoir pressure versus date. So how to uh, get this reserve, uh, pressure points? Simply you have a field, a reservoir, and uh, you have already drilled wells in this reservoir, maybe uh, five wells, 10 wells, 15, 20 wells. And from time to time, you are recording uh, what we call the static pressure or the reservoir pressure uh, in these different wells. Uh, as you can see along uh, almost 30, 30 years or 35 years uh, from the beginning uh, life of the reservoir till uh, till now so at the end of the day you will have like this chart 
uh, many scattered points of reservoir pressure uh, versus the so uh, the bubble point pressure is a main factor in uh, answering the first question and before going deep let's uh, just uh, refresh our mind with uh, what we mean by the bubble pressure and to, to keep it simple just remember this pepsi can uh, i think uh, when we uh, when we open any one of us when we open a pepsi can they will hear like a voice of the gas yeah that's because uh, this pepsi can is under pressure so it's pressurized and now you're gonna open it so you are subjected to the uh, atmospheric pressure uh, so the gas will be evolved from this pepsi can this is the same concept in the reservoir our reservoir is initially pressurized and uh, as we produce oil from this reservoir we are we are dr drilling wells in the reservoir we are subjecting this reservoir to a, to a, a lower pressure and then producing more more oil having more offtake from the reservoir so it's the pressure will be decreasing with time decreasing with time until a point we call it the bubble point pressure like you open the pepsi can so the gas will be evolved from the reservoir so as you can see this is a chart and we can see clearly uh, a declining trend in uh, the pressure. And also we can see that some of the pressure points are below the bubble point pressure. And as we mentioned before, getting below the bubble, uh, the bubble point pressure, it means that uh, the gas will be evolved from your reservoir. So uh, the important question now, so what happens? What happens when the reservoir or the gas evolved from my reservoir? So these are uh, some of uh, the negative results. So energy is removed from your reservoir, gas production limiting oil production, drilling through the depleted zones may be uh, may cause problems and issues and the challenges. And at the end of the day, all of these uh, negative factors will uh, will, cue, will cause low recovery factors. And as I mentioned before, we need to increase our uh, reserve and our recovery. So this is the optimum time to start our water injection project so once your pressure is slightly declining below the bubble point of pressure gas more gas will be evolved so you're gonna lose your energy you're gonna lose your reserve so it is the optimum time to start your water injection to uh, support your reservoir to increase its uh, its pressure and hence we're gonna increase our production and as you can see after uh, in, uh, starting the water injection, you can see uh, another trend, which is an, an increasing trend of uh, the reservoir pressure. And now I, I, I believe that you, you are all now familiar and you can uh, tell me uh, where the water injection stopped again. And simply it's here because, because we can see another declining uh, trend in pressure which is a sign of uh, we lost our pressure and it means that we stopped our injection maybe due to something out of hand out of control maybe due to the surface facility uh, maybe due to we don't we don't have uh, enough water to inject on our reservoir maybe due, due to uh, um, you know historical uh, problems and issues in the well itself maybe some uh, problem scale problem as i mentioned in the water injection outline but so uh, uh, in brief to so the, the short answer to the first question is when to start the water injection project or what is the optimum time to start our water injection project is that when you have a declining trend of fuel pressure and you are just below the bubble point of pressure now at that time you have to uh, think about water injection and water flooding okay so let's go to the second main question and this is a very important question once uh, we decided to start our water injection your manager will come to you and ask so uh, how much water or how many barrels of water uh, we need to inject onto our reservoir and here we need to uh, remind ourselves or recall the term of vrr or it uh, stands for voidish voidish replacement ratio voidish replacement ratio which is simply we're going to divide uh, the water we're going to inject by uh, the fluid we are producing so for example if we have uh, a fixed production of a constant production of uh, 10000 barrel fluid per day and we have three scenarios of water injection just to clarify what is what what i mean by the vrr and what is the importance of vrr in answering this question so we got the first case we will inject 
higher than uh, what we produce. So we're going to inject about uh, 15,000. And in the second case, we're going to inject around or the same, just below or above, slightly uh, below or above the production, which is 10,000. And uh, the third case, we're going to inject uh, below the production, which is 7,000. So the VRR simply, you're going to divide your injection by your production. So we have three cases, the VRR equal 1.5, 1 and point oh, uh, 0 0.7 okay so now we have three cases as you can see on the slide we have vrr higher than one and vrr equal to one and vrr lower than one so the vrr higher than one it means that uh, i will increase my pressure the vrr equal one it means that i gotta maintain our pressure and vrr below than one it means that I will not be able to increase the pressure or the pressure will still uh, decline um, even if it will uh, it will show gentle decline but it's it will still decline okay so uh, what is the answer now what is the target as as I mentioned before the target is my pressure my reservoir pressure is declining and I want to start my water injection project to uh, supplement to uh, uh, energize the reservoir another time so that it gonna produce uh, more fluid and more oil. That's it? Okay, so it means that I need to inject uh, VRR higher than one, okay? But let me uh, clarify the main two points, which is maybe someone asked me, uh, so if you gonna inject or, or fear the VRR is higher than one, so why uh, you mentioned the VRR lawyers than one or why we need to inject uh, with VRR lawyers than one. These are some of the reasons, I, as I mentioned, maybe uh, some of reasons it's not, um, uh, it's out of your control or out of your hand, maybe due to surface issues, you have like uh, a leakage in, in your pipelines. Um, maybe you have some issues in, uh, in your wells, some wells uh, are not accepting uh, this water. You, you are not able to inject water in these wells. Uh, maybe some uh, injector wells uh, you have uh, you had converted these wells into producers, so no longer uh, 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 injector wells. So you, you used yeah, use these injector wells to have to be an oil producer. So uh, you don't have injector wells. Maybe um, uh, you have you drilled more producers and you, and still as uh, the same fixed number of injectors. So you cannot. Uh, increase your injection uh, maybe you have you don't have uh, uh, availability of your water or you cannot dispose your water so there are so many reasons uh, out of your hand and out of your control and uh, and this is uh, uh, daily we are trying to manage and optimize the project because of all of these reasons uh, may obligate us to to inject below the vrr but the answer now uh, uh, if we can control all the parameters and uh, if everything is is working well, so uh, the objective is to uh, increasing our pressure. But uh, there is an, another important point you need to take into your consideration that we will not uh, uh, inject with VRR higher than one along all the lifetime of the reservoir at the early stages so you suffer you are suffering from pressure decline so you need to rapidly increase your reservoir pressure you need to inject more water into your reservoir to, to energize your reservoir but after a while after some time and as a rule of thumb as and as so many research papers and many practice uh, we found that after reaching the bubble point of pressure or just exceeding it was uh, a little bit uh, we will maintain our, our VRR equal to one so that uh, we will not cause fracturing of our reservoir. If we cause fracturing of our reservoir, we're going to lose uh, all of our water injection and we cannot optimize our water injection and we just injecting into the space, into another direction, into another area, into another reservoir, and we are not injecting into our uh, interested reservoir. So. Uh, at the beginning, so the short answer is that at the beginning or at the early stages of your water injection, you're going to use VRR higher than one. So, for example, if you are producing about uh, 10,000 uh, parallel fluid, so you will inject uh, about 15,000. So it may, it may last for two years, three years, depending on our reservoir understanding. And after these two years or three years, uh, 
um, you will you will uh, decrease your VRR to have a VRR around one, maybe uh, 0.9, maybe 1.1. It's 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 roughly the same as the same number. And uh, for example, if you are producing with the same 10,000 barrel flow per day, so you're gonna inject 10,000 barrel water per day. Okay. So let's see like uh, uh, this is um, uh, so uh, by the way all of uh, the presented data are real data so the pressure charts are, are real pressure chart for for a, re a real uh, reservoir field and this is also uh, a real uh, uh, estimation and designing of the VRR for actually uh, for actual for an actual real data field so as you can see this is also the date and the, the, the right side is the rate and uh, sorry the left side is the rate and the right side is the pressure and is, uh, you can also see the dotted horizontal line is the proper point pressure and this red line is the pressure and this blue line is the water injection as you can see uh, if my mouse is, is shown on the screen so at the early stages as i mentioned it's from um, 2019 to 2022 uh, so it's almost about three years we gonna inject uh, was about around seven or, or eight thousand barrel water per day which equivalent to a VRR of 1.7, as I mentioned before, it's uh, above than one. So you will show a rapid increase. And as I mentioned, this is an actual data. This is an actual data for a reservoir. So as you can see, this is a rapid increase in the pressure because the pressure was uh, below the bubble uh, point at the starting point of the injection. And after, as you can see, uh, slightly uh, having a pressure uh, higher than the bubble point of pressure, we don't need to uh, still injecting with higher VRR, so not to, not to waste our water and not to uh, cause fracturing of our reservoir. So we're going to um, decline or decrease our VRR to be around 1.1, 1, uh, 1 0.9. And as you can see, this is uh, the, uh, the blue line, which is the water injection line, is decreased to almost only uh, 5,000 uh, barrel water per day. And as you can see, there is slightly uh, increasing a trend of the reservoir pressure because actually we use uh, a slightly higher than one VRR. And this is uh, not constant. We, we can manage it later to have like VRR 0.8 or 0.9 to have uh, a stable reservoir pressure. So I hope now uh, everything is clear. So the first question, how when to start the water injection, it's a, a short answer. When we have a pressure below the bubble point of pressure, we need to start our water injection. And the second question is uh, how much water or how many uh, barrels of water to inject. Actually, it's not constant. Uh, it's not uh, a case. It's, it's a case by case. So uh, uh, the theory behind or the big picture is that at the early stages of your reservoir, you need to inject with uh, VRR higher than one to uh, rapidly increase your reservoir pressure and hence you you're gonna increase your uh, fluid and oil production. And after a while, maybe two years, three years, depending on your understanding, you will decrease you, your VRR to have like uh, around one. Uh, so that you will maintain your reservoir pressure, uh, don't waste your water and resources, and not using uh, high, uh, fracturing of the reservoir and uh, 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 wasting your water into um, uh, undesired area. Okay, so let's go to the third question. And this is also uh, a very important question, and this is also, and it's only one slide, which, which is, uh, so uh, you decided to start your water injection, and you made a design uh, or a proposal uh, of uh, how many barrels of water or how much water and the schedule or the timeline of this water. Uh, I, as I mentioned, we are R1.5, we are R1.1. So the third question is that what is the end result? Uh, what is the recovery? What is the reserve I'm going to add? Uh, as, the, as in the introduction slide, I mentioned that the importance of the water flooding or water injection project is to increase the reserve, is to add more oil. So this is a very important question. Uh, how to calculate the water injection value. Actually, this is also uh, um, uh, uh, a real data field for another field uh, uh, calculating the water injection value for it. 
Um, and uh, to be honest, so there are so many uh, ways of calculation and many methods. Um, if you have uh, a full simulation model for your reservoir, you can uh, simply calculate the effect of your water injection. Uh, if you don't have, and uh, in our company, uh, we don't have a full model for all of our reservoirs but because it's somehow complex. So there are, there are, any, uh, there are, there are other analytical methods like uh, what we call CMV or the cumulative net voidage. But uh, these are some complex, I, I, do, I don't want to go through this uh, analytics uh, right now, but there is another uh, simple method, and uh, many of us uh, implement this method and have a representing uh, value, which is uh, using the decline curve uh, analysis. And uh, as you can see, you have like a history of your production, and simply you can know uh, the decline uh, rate of your field of your, your reservoir. So, uh, for example, if we if we have like a forty uh, percent decline uh, per year for your reservoir without water injection, uh, the question will be what will be the decline rate if we gonna implement water injection? So uh, you will go through uh, other fields, other analog fields, other. Uh, other companies which implemented your water the water injection before you and like you will have like an, a pinch marking or like uh, uh, you will ask them uh, what is the decline rate uh, while you are subjecting to water injection so uh, definitely of course the decline rate in water injection will be lower than uh, the decline rate in your depleted uh, reservoir. So, for example, as I mentioned, if you have a decline rate of about 40% or 35% uh, in water injection, you may have like a decline rate around 20% or 25%. So, this difference in decline will add you more reserve. Uh, so, in this case, uh, we have a decline rate about, I, I don't know if you can see or not, but um, I'm trying to to mark here so we have a decline rate about 41 uh, with our water injection and if we're gonna implement water injection we will have a decline rate about 28 so it means that here uh, the remaining volume or the remaining result uh, in this in this the first case which is with our water injection we will have 0.8 uh, uh, million oil reserve and in the second case when we'll uh, when we will implement the water injection we will have uh, about uh, 1.9 so it means the difference is 1 million. So uh, simply or, or in brief, we will add 1 million uh, barrel um, oil uh, uh, as an additional and uh, reserve after applying the water injection. So the third question in brief is how to calculate the water injection value. We have different methods. Uh, one of the simplest methods is to apply the decline curve analysis uh, for two cases. The first case is without water injection and the second case is with, with implementing the water injection. So you will see a difference in the decline rate uh, and for sure the water injection will uh, show a lower decline rate which means that uh, you will have more oil and more reserve, okay? So the fourth question and the last uh, important question is how to monitor your uh, water injection, okay? So uh, actually, uh, we have uh, also some uh, techniques and some methods to uh, monitor our water injection. And uh, again, I, uh, I need to remind you that uh, uh, the maps in front of you is actually, uh, are actually real data and for a uh, third field. Um, and I will go, I gotta show you how to um, uh, monitor the water injection. So this is called the water cat map on the right side. and the left side is the salinity map. So as you can see, we have here a scale for the water cut. Um, uh, when you go to the blue, blue, blue color, it means that you have a higher water cut. And the higher water cut means that all of your stream or most of your stream is actually water, okay? And uh, in the left side, which is the salinity or the chlorine measurement, um, as you can see, as going to the red color, it means that you have a higher salinity, okay? So let's start with the water cat map. This is uh, simply uh, a reservoir or a field, and you have a map for it, simply a structure map, and uh, you're gonna contour your water cat values just to give the water cat values to your uh, geologist, and he will give you uh, such as this map, and just you need to uh, interpret the data. So 
these two triangles represents two injectors. So we have in this field, like this injector in the south area and the other injector in the north area. And uh, around these injectors, we have, as you can see, this is um, small font uh, symbols, uh, square symbols. This represents wells, producer oil wells. So we have around uh, three or four wells in the south area, and the same maybe uh, five or six wells in the north area. So simply, you can see that all of the map uh, is, 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 is almost uh, blue in color. So it means that your water injection or the water you are injecting in, into your wells are covering all of your reservoir, okay? So it means that you have, um, you have an effective uh, water injection. Your water can reach all uh, of your reservoir and you can see uh, uh, this in, into your producer wells. Uh, another uh, 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 important point, as you can see, we are injecting from south and we are injecting from north. And you can see here the central area. Uh, we are pushing oil from uh, north and south, from south and north to the central area. Uh, and you can see here the, 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 the color is somehow uh, green, not, not totally blue as uh, south and north. So it's also another indication that we have an effective uh, water injection. Uh, we are sweeping oil from uh, different directions, from south and from north towards the central uh, area. And uh, the, same, the same here for the second map, which is a salinity map. Uh, the salinity, uh, in brief, uh, you know that we have a formation, higher formation salinity, maybe around uh, uh, 100,000. And we are using a, a war injection water, most likely seawater, which has a, a low salinity, about uh, 30,000. So if you're gonna inject your seawater and uh, with your formation water, so uh, you should see like uh, a decreasing in the salinity, which is uh, a yellow color. So the same here, we have the same, the same map and the same structure, the same wells and the same two injectors. One is the one injector well in the south and the other one is in the north. Also, we can see that around the injectors, uh, we can see a, a yellow color everywhere. It means that yellow color, it means that uh, low salinity, and the low salinity means that uh, that uh, we have a good mixing of uh, your seawater with formation water, which means that you're injecting your water, it is sweeping and is covering all of your reservoir. And also the same uh, uh, the same note here, that the central area, uh, can show, you can see here like um, uh, red red colors, which, mean, which means that high salinity, which means that uh, the, the, the seawater uh, is still not touching this central area. And it means that uh, we have a good sweeping from different direction to the central uh, area, okay? So, and to, to make it more clear, uh, this is uh, also a, a timeline, water cat and the salinity for the same uh, previous uh, field. Uh, just to see the trend of water cat and the trend of salinity. And as you can see here, we have uh, an increasing trend for the last uh, 20 years. And as you can see this vertical line, the start of injection. So since the starting water injection, we can see that the water cat is, is increasing, is increasing, which means that uh, uh, we have an effective water injection and our water is covering our reservoir. And also the same here on the right side, uh, we started with higher salinity, as I mentioned, around uh, 100,000. And during the, the last uh, 20, 20 years, we can see that uh, uh, the salinity is also uh, uh, showing a declining trend. The same thing like the water cut, it means that there is a mixing between the seawater and the formation, formation water. And the result is like uh, an average value of the salinity, which is a lower value. And it means that our water is covering and sweeping all of our uh, reservoir. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's worth to mention that sometimes you may see like anomalies, like these values, these uh, yellow or orange uh, square values, which means that maybe this world itself is in a remote location in the reservoir. It may be not be uh, subjected to the water flooding. Uh, there, may, there, there may be like a subsurface uh, element or barrier like uh, a fault which cannot be seen or uh, the fish the fishes or the uh, the sand here is, is showing bad quality so the water cannot reach to this wall so so many reasons and so many uh, uh, parameters behind any water injection so um, 
to to sum to sum up or to the conclusion of, of this webinar is to to get, to get aware and familiar with what we are already doing in our companies in terms of practical point of view. These are uh, uh, the, the main four questions uh, you have to be familiar with. The first question is uh, when to start your water injection, what is the optimum time to start your water injection, and does it mention uh, once you see your reservoir pressure declining below the bubble point of pressure, you need to think about the water injection and start your uh, water injection immediately. The second following question is, uh, so how many uh, barrels of water I need to inject into my reservoir? The answer is it's not constant. Uh, simply at the early stages, you need to start, uh, you need to inject uh, more water with VRR higher than one to uh, pressurize your reservoir. And as a result, you will see a higher uh, or increase in your production fluid and your oil production. But after a while, maybe two years or three years, uh, depending on your understanding of the reservoir, you need to decrease your water injection and reaching a VRR around uh, one, that, uh, just to maintain your reservoir pressure, not wasting your uh, uh, water and not accusing your uh, uh, reservoir fracturing. The third question is, uh, what is the end value or what is the total value of the water injection? Uh, and how to calculate it. I mentioned that there are different methods, but the simplest one is uh, the decline curve analysis, just to run two cases, one case with out water injection, and the second case uh, with, with water injection, you will see different decline uh, uh, ratio. And as a result, uh, you will, uh, uh, due to the water injection, the decline rate will be uh, decreased, and hence it means that you will produce more oil. And the fourth question, which is uh, you started your water injection for time and you need to evaluate your performance, evaluate the water injection and they make what we call conformance review. So uh, one of uh, the effective methods is to have your water cat map and salinity map, your water cat trend and your salinity trend. Look at the data and try to uh, make in your interpretation. As I, as I showed you in the presentation, we have like a good sweeping in our reservoir. We can see that all of the map is in blue in color and we can see the central area uh, is a bit green. So it means that we are sweeping oil to the central area. Also, uh, uh, the water cut trend, we have an increasing water cut trend and the salinity, we have a decreasing uh, water, uh, we have a decreasing salinity uh, trend. So um, I want to say uh, thank you and it's time for uh, questions. Feel free, I'm here, I'm, I'm, I'm all ears to, to hear your question. And thanks again, Dr. Ahmad, for such an invitation. I hope you uh, got interested and thank you, Abu. Thank you so much, uh, Engineer Karim. We all would like to thank you for the amazing webinar you presented today. We have received many questions, but I have collected the most important ones. Uh, okay. The first question is, uh, why we leave our field to drop below the bubble point? Shall we start injection with VRR equal one at the bubble point? No, at the bubble point, uh, 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 the bubble point of pressure, uh, as I mentioned, we need to inject with VRR uh, higher than one because if you if you're gonna use a VRR equal one at the power point of pressure, it means that you will sustain your pressure at this same value. But uh, you need to inject more water. It means that higher uh, VRR higher than one to increase your pressure above the power point, and after that you can sustain your pressure. Thank you so much. And the second question is, how do we choose the optimum location of the injection wells? Okay, so actually it's a very good question. And there are many, uh, I don't want to say theoretical techniques, but uh, you know, uh, theoretically you can, we can have a simulation and we can uh, change the pattern, uh, you know, five spots, three spots, different patterns and see as the effect of uh, uh, the cumulative oil or the reserve, the total reserve at the end of the day. But in reality, in reality, uh, any oil and uh, any oil company, its primary objective is to produce more oil. So uh, they will not take care about the water injection wells, and they prefer initially to start with peripheral water injection. So if you have uh, like, uh, I'll try to show it in the presentation. So. I don't know if you can see it or not. Something like if you have this field, so all of your wheel, wheels are in the central area. So you're gonna start your injection like like here. I I may use my annotate. 
so it would be something like can you see this drawing this circle it be the peripheral it means that at the outer side of the reservoir so they will start with peripheral wells so that these peripheral wells or these two as uh, red circles will inject water to the center of the reservoir so this is at the early stage but after time uh, as uh, the practice we we do in our camp is that we we will convert some of our already producer oil wells into injectors. So it's like a irreg irregular patterns of water injection. Thank you so much for the answer. And uh, someone is asking, how, uh, if we have a water wet reservoir, how effective, how effective is to implement water injection? If we have like an, an water wet? Reservoir, reservoir. how effective? Yes. How, how effective is to implement water injection? <laughs> Actually, we don't, pre we don't prefer to have uh, an oil wet because if you have an oil wet, uh, you know, it's, the oil is, is really stuck to your poor throat. So uh, the effectiveness will, will, not, will not be so good. But uh, his question uh, is, is the preferred case. If we have water wet, it means that the oil phase is the movable, oil, is the movable phase. So it means that if we get inject water, it will... Uh, some of this water will adhere to the poor throat and the other will sweep more oil and this is the target. We need to, we, we, we inject water for two reasons. For increasing the pressure as I mentioned and as this map we got to sweep more oil to the producer wells. So it is the preferred case for us. Thank you so much. And the last question is, someone asking is, during the water injection, are there any chances that water gets leaked off to other zones instead of sweeping to the oil uh, oil to the production well yes 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 uh, yes this is also a very good question uh, the first case if we if we close the fracturing and this is clear but uh, the second case which is not clear uh, which uh, which if, if, we don't, if we don't have if we don't have any fractures uh, but we may have a, a permeable zone you know, so, so that we have different reservoirs or different zones in the same reservoir, but one of these uh, zones or one of these reservoirs have high, higher permeability than other zones. So uh, you're going to inject all of your water into this zone and uh, the other zones or the other reservoirs uh, will not get uh, the enough water injection. And actually, this is a very good question. And we, we call it like, uh, as I mentioned, the VRR, we called it the, the breakdown VRR. So this is the total VRR. What I mentioned is called the total VRR. So um, uh, in advance, advancing, we're going to break this VRR to each zone and each reservoir to see how much water and how many barrels of water each zone is, is, is getting specifically. Thank you so much, uh, Engineer Karim. We all appreciate your uh, amazing webinar today. It was really informative. And thank you guys for watching, and we hope to see you uh, in the next uh, webinar. Thank you so much, uh, Engineer Karim.